Hello and welcome to my channel. This is an actuator from SteadyWin. This is an old version of the actuator. Actually, this is the first actuator which I reviewed on my channel. And so I disassembled this actuator. I took the controller out and I would like to replace this old controller with the new controller because the new controller is made based on the MIT Mini Cheetah controller. So actually it's the same components but arranged in the different way. So this controller I bought also from this company SteadyWin because they use it for the newer version of the actuator. And actually I think that newer version and the older version, the only difference is in the, this controller. So we would like to put this controller here, but there is one problem that I have no idea if there is firmware in this controller or if I need to upload this firmware. And for this firmware I need to know the parameters of this motor. This means that before soldering this controller, I would like to measure the KV rating of this motor and also I would like to measure the resistance of the windings and the inductance of the windings. So let's get started. By the way, I have this documentation, but there is no anything about the KV rating or the resistance of the winding or the inductance of the windings. There is only the, uh, yeah, some basic parameters like the maximum current. So this is disassembled old actuator. You see the rotor of the motor. And we can also see the windings. This is a controller from the old SteadyWin actuator. So from this one. And this is a controller which we're going to install. You can buy this controller separately from the SteadyWin company. I think it's around $60. So it's quite reasonable price. In order to measure the resistance of the windings, I have this device. This device measures the resistance by passing the certain current through this resistance and measuring the voltage drop on this resistance. Yeah. 0 0.29 ohm. 0 0.29 ohm. 0 0.29 ohm. Perfect. In order to measure the inductance, I'm going to use this RLC meter. So 100 micro Henry, 119 micro Henry and 99 micro Henry. And what I figured out that this value it depends on the position of the rotor. So if I move the rotor a little bit, the inductance is 195 micro Henry. So it actually goes from somewhere like 80 to 200 micro Henry. So I don't really know which value I should use. Okay, we will think about this later. I would like to measure the KV of this motor. For this, I need to rotate this motor with a constant speed and then measure the voltage on the output wires. And so I decided to make a test bench with which I can measure the KV of different motors. For this, I'm going to use this brushless motor to rotate our test motors. This motor will be controlled with the O drive and I prepared this huge box to put the motor, power supply and O drive inside. Let's assemble it. Let me show you from other side. So this is motor. At the back there is a magnet and encoder will go here. On top of the motor we installed the plate with the O drive and also with Arduino Duo. And after everything is going to be covered with this cover on which I installed two power supply. One power supply for O drive and the second power supply for the Arduino. I mostly finished the wiring. O drive and Arduino are connected with the serial. Over here I have a switch, couple of LEDs and couple of variable resistors and also output from the index of the encoder. Now I need to finish the assembly and program Arduino. Now we need to measure the KV rating of this motor. And for this, I built this device. This is our engineered device. Let's look inside. It has this absolutely useless cover. And behind this cover, we have some controls and motor. So this motor is gonna spin our actuator at a certain constant speed. And we can control this speed with this knob. And with this knob, we can control the current. That means the torque of this motor. And this BNC connector is connected to the encoder behind this motor. 
Let me quickly show you how it works. Safety glasses. Now this switch. Now the O-Drive is going to calibrate the motor and encoder. So this is the calibration procedure. Now this LED is blinking, meaning that it's almost ready. And now it's ready. So if I rotate this knob, motor starts to rotate. At the very small speed, it's a little bit jerky. You don't have to use a small speed. You need to have some like some speed like this one. It can go quite fast. But we don't need to go to the maximum speed. And in order to connect the actuator to this motor, I 3D printed this small piece. So this piece goes on the motor like this. We need to fix it with the screws. So on this 3D printed part, there is these grooves, which goes over here on these heads of the screws like this. Now you have to really pay attention because this could be dangerous and we're going to rotate it slowly. Yeah. Like this. So now we can measure the RPM over here from the encoder with the oscilloscope and also with the oscilloscope we can measure the tension on the windings of the wires and like this we can calculate the KV rating of this motor. And we should not forget that there is a 6 to 1 reducer inside this actuator. The first channel of the oscilloscope I connected to the encoder and the second channel I connected to one coil of the actuator. Let's rotate it and watch uh, the oscilloscope. So when we increase the speed, we have higher voltage. So let me stop here. So if we zoom in, we have our sine wave. This is perfect. Now the first channel has the frequency of 1.67 Hz. So this is RPM of the motor. So the frequency of the second channel is 211 Hz. And peak to peak voltage is 17.6. So let's write down this. I will redo this test a couple more times just to have the statistics. With our over engineering device, we measured these values. We measured the frequency of the rotation of the output shaft the frequency of the signal from one of the coil and the voltage peak-to-peak -peak from this coil. And we did this for three coils. From this data, we can get the number of pole pairs of this motor. This is quite easy. We need to take the frequency 2, this one, divided by the frequency 1 and divided by the reduction ratio. And in order to calculate the KV rating, we can use this formula. So here, basically, this is the frequency in RPM. This is the voltage, zero to peak. And there is also this factor 0 0.95, which I don't really know where it comes from, but apparently you need to use it. I think that probably it takes into account the efficiency of these motors. And so I applied these formulas. And for number of pole pairs, I have the values here. And it's always close to the 21 for each experiment. And so we can conclude that we have 21 pole pairs. And for the KV rating, the values are here. And the average of these values is 78 RPM per volts. So I think we measured everything which we need for this motor, for this actuator. And now it's time to solder the controller to this actuator. And basically we just need to solder three wires. That's it. I've used small 3D printed spacers and I fixed this board on top of the actuator. The original cover does not fit anymore because of the connector. So I think I will just cut out this piece over here, which I marked. And it should be okay. I have modified this cover. And now it fits perfectly well. It looks quite beautiful. A new actuator from the old one. Let's now check if there is firmware on this controller. So probably if there is firmware, it means that uh, all these measurements which I done is kind of useless. But nevertheless, it's nice to know uh, the parameters of the motor. And in the future, if I would need 
to reprogram this controller, I already know all the values which I need. I have connected the battery over here, 24 volts, and the CAN bus. The CAN bus is going to be controlled with this Arduino board. Let's now try to switch it on. So let's connect everything, starting with Arduino. The next is the power. Do you see there is LED which is lighted up over here? The power is on. No explosion. Ooh la la. It works but really badly, so switch it off. I think that the values of the resistance, uh, etc., etc., is not is wrong. So I need to I need to do something with the firmware. Ah, because the problem is that we did not calibrate it. We need to do the calibration of the encoder. So the firmware is there, but we need to do the calibration of the encoder. And as we did not do this calibration of the encoder, of course, it does not know where is the position of the motor and uh, it makes all these uh, strange uh, movements, etc. So we need to do the calibration of the encoder. Good. Whew. I thought that's something wrong. Over here, I've connected this small spark fun module. This is a, this is a USB to serial adapter. And we're going to connect it to this uh, very old computer and uh, look at the serial port using TerraTerm program. Fine, now we need to power up our actuator. Aha! And we have some faults, but uh, let's ignore them. Now let's try to do the calibrate encoder. I hope it's going to work. So now we're going to switch off the serial and try again to communicate with this motor using the CAN bus. Let's hope that it's going to work. So Arduino, power for the actuator. Let's go to the, how it's called, to the motor mode. Ooh. It works. Nice, nice, nice. Over here there is one LED which shows the power and it should be also the second LED which shows when the actuator is in the motor mode. So when the actuator is enabled. So let's try. Let's enable the actuator. And there is a green LED. Let's disable actuator. Enable. Disable. Perfect. Also the actuator sounds quite strange. I will put the mic close to the actuator, so probably you will be able to hear this some kind of strange noise. It's not too bad, but I'm not really a fan of it. But it works, this is good. Before we had an old actuator and now it's kind of new actuator. Don't forget to put the like for this. So this one works, but it happens that I also have this new version of the actuator from the Steadivin. It has exactly the same controller board as we installed here. They also did a good job to put all the data about connectors over here. So the same from this side. And the same from this side. I actually prefer this color. Now let's connect this one and see if there is strange noise with this one too. We are in the motor mode. Yeah, this sounds way better. Today we have made a new actuator from old actuator by changing the control board. And it works. But don't forget to calibrate the encoder position. I cannot say that I really love these actuators, but they are quite cheap, they work and they use MIT Mini Cheetah controller. But the sound which they produce when they rotate are not perfect. We also measured the KV rating of this motor we did not use it because apparently the firmware already was on this board, but at least I learned how to measure the KV. And I built this device to measure the KV, so I think it will be useful for me in the future. As usual, don't forget to put the like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and also huge big thank you to my patrons. Here are their names. Thanks to them this channel is alive, and thanks to them we continue with the robot revolution. Be safe, good luck with your projects, and see you next time.